Okay guys, so in this video we are gonna talk about feature flags. So let's get into it. So what we're gonna cover is what is a feature flag, why are they useful, and when do we want to use them? <clears throat> so the basic idea of a feature flag is, in essence, you have a feature or some type of experience that you want to be able to toggle on or off. Now, it can be as simple as that you have an if condition in your code that just checks some variable that says, oh, this thing is on or it's off. Or it can be very sophisticated. It can be something that checks, oh, if the user is of a certain age or a certain type of user, and they are in a specific region, then they should see this, otherwise they should see that. There's many different ways of using feature flags. A-B testing, if you're familiar with that, is just a form of feature flagging where you show version A or you show version B, depending on who the user is. And so you could say that, oh, 10% of my traffic, they're gonna see version A, and the other 90% are gonna see version B. It can be very sophisticated, but we're gonna, in this video, just kind of keep it simple to start off this process of learning about feature flags because they're actually very powerful. And I would say that if you are the sort of company where let's say that you have a really, really slow release process or some, you wanna just optimize for stability, feature flags is actually a really powerful way of doing that it, because it allows you to ship two versions of the, of a feature and then just flip it on and then if everything works you just keep it on until you can redeploy the next time and you can create the release where you remove the feature flag because now the feature is stable but if something goes wrong you can immediately just flip it off and just everything goes back to normal. So the downside of that is of course you need to support two versions of your feature in the code at the same time but it gives you that that security that, oh, something broke, I can always undo that. Because as you can imagine, if you're in a situation where you're working with a company where rollbacks or stuff like that is very expensive or takes a long time, maybe you have a release schedule, stuff like that, then you can't sit and sit with a broken application for a week or a month or whatever. You need to be able to get back to a known safe state. So the more sophisticated feature flags are usually built around who the user is or where the user is. But we're just gonna focus on on or off in this video. So let's have a look at my little application here. So my application is basically just going to allow me to get some features and update some features. And then it's just gonna serve up a very simple application. So let's look at my simple application here. This is my form, enter contact details for to win money. And it's just a toy app, the React application that we're gonna look at. And let's say for the sake of argument that this was my stable feature. This is what's in the code, right? And then my product manager comes and says, hey, you know what, Frederick? I want you to add a VIP checkbox here so that a person can say that, oh, I'm a VIP person. And then you're going to do something magical cool with that in an upcoming feature. And I go, okay, cool. Uh, but is that really a good idea to just ship it like that? Maybe we want to make sure that we're safe about things. And my manager goes, yeah, sure we should probably make this a feature type of a feature toggle type of thing because we're kind of just testing this out. We don't know if it's gonna work or not. So we don't know if we wanna keep this thing or we wanna remove it. And I go, okay, cool. So there's a business require, uh, there's a business need because it's kind of an experiment. But for me as the developer, it's also beneficial because if I f ship this with a feature flag and something is wrong, because I know, as I said, like I have this really low, slow process or something like that, well, then I can undo the damage that I did in a matter of seconds instead of having to wait for my CI pipelines. Like imagine if, even if I'm in a startup, sometimes it can take up to an hour to get a new version of the code to the user. But if I have a feature flag that is runtime, I can actually flip it immediately. It's, uh, the delay is less than a minute. So let's look at how that can work. So if I go to my main file here, we'll see here that here is my application. And all it's going to do is that once the application starts, it's going to fetch my feature flags. And then it's going to render out this form. And then there's this section here, show VIP button equals equals feature flag state on. And it's going to render out the VIP button or a label with an input checkbox. Uh, if this thing is equal to on. Now, the reason why I have created an enumeration or an enum for these two states, on or off, is 
not necessarily because that's very useful right now because I only have two states, but I just wanted to illustrate to you that sometimes a feature flag is more complicated than on or off, even in the scenario where we don't have dynamic information, like as I was saying, if the a really advanced feature flag would check what type of user are we dealing with? Is the traffic, ten, is this person in a specific region or some other complicated factor? But here, let's say that the, this VIP button had multiple versions. Maybe we said that, okay, can we just run one version, which is one version, which has like version A and then the version B? Well, then I could do this. I can say version B. I could create another enum and I could update this code here to check, okay, is it version A or is it version B and is the feature flag on? So I could actually have multiple versions of the code here in order to do A-B testing, stuff like that, you know, if I wanted to. So that's why I like an enum. And a good rule of thumb for enums when it comes to this sort of stuff is if you only have two states of a feature flag, on or off, then a Boolean value is fine. If you have more than two states, then an enum is usually the way to go. So as you can see here, I have a default feature flag state, which is just thing is off, show VIP button is gonna be off. But let's say now that I wanted to deploy this. So I have, we were just playing pretend now, like I've just shipped this code, it's out in production, well, but the user doesn't see anything. Okay, cool. That's the first thing that is taken care of now. We know now know that we can support both this old version of our application experience. And if I go to my terminal here and I do this, I do a little rest call like so, and I refresh and now I have my beautiful VIP button. So now I, or my checkbox, and now I have released my feature basically. I made it made it live to my users. And if I now start seeing in my logs or something like, oh shit, this isn't working or something is very, very broken, I can immediately just go and undo the work that I did in a matter of seconds if my logs are telling me that something really serious is going on. And I don't have to worry about rebuilding this, creating like a Docker image or scheduling a release process or something like that with some third party or maybe the operations team, I can just very quickly fl flip this thing on and off. So the downside, as I was saying earlier with this, is of course, I need to now support two versions of the same code. But the positive aspect is that it's a very safe feature. It's safe in the manner that I can very quickly go back and like turn the feature off whenever I want. And that's the power of feature flags. Imagine if you were a mobile developer. Well, in a mobile scenario, like the web is very forgiving in a way because every time somebody comes to our website, if I created a new version of my application, they're gonna get the latest code because I just bust their cache and I get they get the new JavaScript, new CSS, new HTML, all of that good stuff, right? But in a mobile app, it's much harder because you don't know when the user is going to update to a new version of the app. So if you ship a feature that is risky, like this VIP button here, well, potentially you could have broken something. And if that's broken, you have no way of forcing the users to upgrade to the new version of the app, even if you fix the problem. So they might be sitting there and not upgrade their app and then they get this broken feature and they're super unhappy. So if you ship, but if you shipped with a, with a feature flag, even if they're on an old version of, with a broken feature, you can still control that. You can still switch off the feature for their version of the app, if that makes sense. So what I want you take, to take away from this is that feature flags are a very powerful way for you to turn things on and off or serve certain features to certain users. Now. I strongly urge you to uh, to consider feature flags if you're dealing with a application that is either very, very hard to update, such as you have a mobile app or you have a really slow release process that takes hours when it comes to shipping new code. If that's what's happening, feature flags is like the best thing for you to make sure that you're always on working code or that you always have the ability to just undo anything that you did wrong. But you should also be aware of that this usually only works 
if you have features that are n are able to exist at the same time because sometimes you have data migrations and stuff like that and then feature flags isn't going to help you all that much without well they could but you have to you have to do a little bit of magic with uh, with uh, quite a lot of other areas in order to make that work so hopefully you found this useful and you will consider thinking about adding feature flags to your work process in those scenarios where it's really important that you always that you can always trust that if something didn't go right you can roll back or if you have a need to serve different features to different users have a great day